right. Hello, hello. Welcome. Tonight's painting for Mantra Monday, we're painting this cute little rainbow design that says I am enough underneath. This is a super easy design. It lends itself really well to um, making it your own and adding little details so that it's just the right uh, piece for you. If you are a beginner tonight, this is a perfect piece for you to start with. Um, so I'm going to start by letting you know what you need for tonight. First off, you are going to need paper. So notice that my the size that I'm working on is about a five by seven. Um, if you do not have watercolor paper, just check that you have slightly thicker paper. If you are using a watercolor notebook that's about a size 8 by 10, I would suggest that you draw a line or cut it in half and only use half of the sheet. Uh, the reason being is that watercolor tends to dry pretty quickly on watercolor paper. And so you can do a full size sheet if you want, but um, you'll have to move a little bit faster than I'm moving. So five by seven tends to work really well for the size that we're, we're doing. You'll need a pencil and I prefer a kneaded eraser when I'm working with watercolors because you don't get all these little tiny um, pieces that come off of the eraser. And for brushes tonight, I'm still using my favorite brush. If you follow me, know anything about me, I use this brush for everything. It's a uh, Silver Limited Black Velvet size 6, and it's a round brush. For tonight's class, I do not recommend using a very small brush because you will need to have a brush that can hold a little bit more water and a little bit more pigment. Um, then we'll also be using a micron pen. If you don't have a micron pen, this is just for the words at the bottom. You can use any black pen. And then lastly, watercolor paints. For our painting tonight, we'll be using a magenta, a purple, a blue, a green, and I personally like uh, dusting up the colors a little bit with a brown. So those are the colors that we're using. Once again, if you want to change the colors and do a different kind of rainbow with different colors, you're more than welcome. So, oh, and water. We can't paint with watercolors without water. I use two glasses, one for cleaning off my brush and one for grabbing colors from my palette so I don't dirty up my palette. But if you only have one, that's okay too and a rag or some sort of paper towel. Uh, we use this a lot to dry off our brush if we need to lift color off of the paper or if we need to not have quite so much liquid on our brush, we might tap it onto a paper towel or a cloth like this. I believe that's it, so I'm going to reverse the camera here and we can start. All right, as you all are setting up your space, I'm going to move my things to get situated. Tonight, um, my original painting, I did use a hot pressed uh, watercolor paper. What that means is it's just a smooth grain paper. But for the example that I'm doing tonight, I am using a cold pressed paper. And so cold press just means that it's a little bit more textured. You might notice the difference, you might not. I just wanted to point it out to you just in case you notice something is different. All right, hello. Thank you so much for the kind comments. All right, so as always, we're going to start uh, by drawing a line at the bottom of our paper. This is why I have a, a scrap piece of paper here. And the line that we're gonna draw is so that we can write our mantra underneath. So. You can use any straight edge or an extra sheet of paper. I always like to leave a little bit of space here. I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see a little bit better. And now we'll start by writing our mantra. So this week's mantra is I am enough. 
I don't know about you, but I sure feel like with social media today, we do have a lot of kind of this overwhelming perfection that we see on social media. And so a lot of times, even me, I don't think that I'm enough as an artist, enough as a teacher when I was a teacher. And so I really want us to reflect this week on all the ways that we are enough and that we are trying our best and that our best some days is is totally enough and that we don't have to push it. So this is something that I need to remind myself about um, every week. And I hope that you can kind of tailor this to your needs. So we'll start with I am enough, however you want to write it at the bottom. I am enough. And if you are anything like me, uh, knowing two languages, I often have to check words like enough to make sure that I spell them correctly. Because obviously in English, <laughs> our sounds don't always look like how they should when we spell. So enough. Yes, I think I spelled that correctly. All right, now we're ready to for the painting part. So I'm not going to sketch out my rainbow. If you need to sketch your rainbow out, we're going to do four different art arches and then a little heart in the middle. So it's up to you if you'd like to sketch yours or not. For now, I'm going to leave this aside and I'm going to mix my colors so, so that I have my colors all ready. Okay, so when you are working with watercolors, you want to make sure that you have enough water mixed with your pigment. So I'm going to start by adding water to my palette. So I'm just going to take maybe five or six brushfuls of water. All right, now that I have some water on my palette, now I'm going to grab some pigment. So I'm going to start with this dusty magenta. Magenta is a mix between a red and a little bit of purple. If you don't have magenta, you can mix a little red and a little purple. This is what my magenta looks like. So I'm going to add magenta. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to be testing my colors on a test sheet of paper. So if you're not sure how much pigment to add, that you can always check it on a piece of paper. And now for these Mantra Monday series, I have been using a set of dusty colors. What does that mean? That means that I'm adding a little bit of brown to my color. And instead of making it a muddy color, we're, what we're doing is we're just making it a dusty color. So what adding brown to our colors does is it kind of um, makes them less vibrant. So we don't have as bright of a color. I'm going to check it on a scrap piece of paper to see what it looks like, to see if I need to add more brown. And I like that color. It's up to you, though, if you want more pink or more brown. You can change the color however you'd like. All right, now that I have my magenta, and notice how much water I do have. You can see it's pooling here. Like I said, for this painting, we will need quite a bit of water. All right, now I'm going to add some water to a different well, and we're going to make this dusty purple. We're mixing all of our colors ahead of time because watercolors tend to dry very fast on paper. And so having our colors mixed ahead of time is going to uh, keep us from kind of stressing out about our colors drying. All right, now that I have quite a bit of water, now I'm going to add, grab a purple pigment. This is Carbazole Violet. It's a color by Daniel Smith. It's kind of a bluish, uh, obviously it's a violet, so it's a little bit more blue than purple. That's okay, That's this is what Carbazole Violet looks like on paper. If you don't have any purple, remember you can always mix your own purple using blue and red. 
So now that I have my Carbazole Violet, I'm going to dusty the color up. Remember that I'm going to add a little bit of brown to my purple. I might add a little bit more. If I add too much brown, I can always go back and add more purple. I'm going to check that color I just made on an extra sheet of paper. Notice the difference between the two colors. This color, just the Carbazole Violet, is a lot brighter, a lot more vibrant. And then when I add brown to my, my purple, it just kind of, um, it gives us more of a dusty antique feeling. I think I like that color, so I'm going to leave it how it is. And I'm going to move on to my next color. So my next color is a blue. I'm going to make a dusty blue. I'm going to move my palette here so I have a different well that I can use. If you don't have a palette like this, you can always use a, a plate. A plate, a glass or, or porcelain even plate works best. But you can always improvise and use a glass plate that you have at home or even a plastic tray. All right, I'm going to add some water. That looks good. Now I'm ready to add my blue pigment. The blue that I'm using is called Thalo Blue. It's a color by Daniel Smith. It's a very, very vibrant blue. Here's what it looks like without adding the brown. And since I like to dusty my colors up, I'm going to add a little bit of brown. I think adding brown to blue tends to actually even make him make the blue look slightly turquoise even. Here's what my phthalo blue looks like when I've dusted it up with a little brown. You can see how the, the uh, brilliance of the color is toned down just a little bit. So I think I like that color. I'm going to leave it like that. And move on to my last color, which is a dusty green. I'm going to make that color in this last well here. So again, adding quite a bit of water. Five, six brushfuls. If you have extra pigment left over, you can always make more than one rainbow painting. All right, and now I'm going to find my green. I'm using a color from Daniel Smith called Sap Green. This green has a little bit of a yellow tone to it, so it's not a pure green like a hooker's green. It, it does have a, a yellow to it. If your green is a little more vibrant, you can always add yellow. And same thing, I'm going to add some green to dusty it up. Or Sorry, add some brown to dusty it up. Now with this green pigment, you don't actually have to use all that much brown. Um, because green tends to be one of those colors that's easily persuaded by brown. So I don't tend to use as much brown. Here's my dusty green. Versus, here's what this sap green, ooh, that's way too dark. Here's what the sap green looks like without adding that brown. All right, so I have all of my colors that I need. If you wanted to add a fifth art arc to your rainbow, you can definitely mix new colors. But now I'm all set to paint. I'm gonna actually switch my water so I have some clean water for my painting. All right, now sometimes um, with certain watercolor paintings, we tend to tape them on the, on the surface that we're working on, and that's going to keep our paper from bending and buckling because it gets wet. For this painting, I don't want to tape it down because I'm actually going to be moving it as I'm making the arc. I feel like personally it helps me to move the paper as I'm painting so that my paintbrush is always pointing um, up, okay? If you prefer it a different way, that's fine. If you prefer to move your hand with the paper, but I do feel like it's easiest here to move the paper. So I'm gonna start with my, my outermost 
arch of my rainbow and then I'm going to work inwards, okay? So I'm going to start with my magenta. I'm going to get quite a bit of pigment on my brush. If you've taken any of my classes before, sometimes you've seen that I either tap on the palette to get some liquid off or sometimes I'll even tap on my paper towel. We don't want to do that today because we want a lot of liquid in our brush. This is why we can't use a small brush that doesn't hold that much liquid. I'm going to grab a lot of liquid and I'm going to start on one side. I'm going to go a little bit above the words so that I have some space. And I'm going to start with my arch. When you're painting yours, I suggest to make this bottom area however thick you want to before moving and finishing your arch. Why? Because this part is going to dry a lot faster. Now you notice that I have a lot of liquid here where I can actually pick it up and I can move it on my paper. You want that much liquid because then you won't see your brush strokes as you're painting. So I'm going to continue to grab more liquid from my, from my palette as I start to arch my rainbow here. And I'm using the paper, the edges of the paper, to kind of guide me. I'm going to check the thickness before I keep moving. And I always want to make sure that I have this liquid pooling because I'm going to show you what happens if I don't have, have a lot of liquid here. Okay, say I'm not using all that much liquid on my brush. What you'll tend to see is one, of course, your color isn't that dark, but two, it's going to be really hard for you to have this smooth, um, uniform color. You're going to start to see your brush strokes. And these lines here are going to start to dry really fast. So already these lines here are starting to dry. And so when I try to keep moving, look what happens to my lines. You can see that the edges here have already started to dry. Versus when I have a lot of water, the paper stays wet enough to be able to continue to work. So make sure you have quite a bit of liquid on your brush. It's going to make your, it's going to make your painting job a lot easier and it'll look a lot cleaner when you're done. So I'm going to continue to move my paper as I'm painting. Remember that rainbows, Every rainbow I've seen, at least in art, is not perfect. These rainbows are no exception. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you have a lot of liquid at the very end, you notice how I have a big pool at the very, very end. We can always lift some of that color away. So we dry our brush. And with a dry brush, we come back and we just lift some of that. Now notice my brush was almost too dry, and so I lifted too much, and now it's not very uniform. So I'm going to add a little bit more back there. Now it looks a little bit more uniform. All right, now I was able to kind of fix that mess that I had without enough liquid. I'm going to dry off my brush. And I'm going to come back for a new color. In my original design, I, my next color was purple. If you'd like to make your rainbow different colors, be my guest. This is your painting. This is your time to explore. But I'm going to use a purple. Now you can tell our papers are starting to bend a little bit. So I would suggest to kind of as you're painting, use your opposite hand in order to kind of push your paper down. And we're going to start on the next color. Remember that we are fixing the start of our rainbow before we continue. 
Now, I already can tell that I need to kind of watch out as far as how thick I'm making these arches. I think I started a little thick and I have two more to go and I want to keep, a, I want to put a little heart in the middle. So I'll continue the thickness of this one and I think my next one I'm going to make slightly thinner. All right, I'm going back every so often. Every time you see my hand move away, it's because I'm grabbing more pigment and water from my palette. And I'm keeping on turning my paper so that my brush is always pointed up. That for me helps. Now you just have to be careful though that your hand underneath, that you're not resting it on the paper. Otherwise you could accidentally smudge what you're working on. All right. Well, this side is a little bit thicker than this side, but you know what? That's okay. I'm working on not going back and not trying to fix some of my mistakes. Sometimes the more we try to fix our mistakes with watercolor, the more frustrated we get because we end up ruining it even more. So I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to work on my next ring. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the original. My next color is blue. You can always switch colors, work on a different color. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do blue. And um, I'm going to try to do this next ring just a little bit thinner so that I have room. Once again, I'm going to start on one side. I'm going to figure out how thick it is first before I keep moving upwards. And I'm going to twist my paper. And come back down. This is also a good practice for those of you who might be trying to paint steady even lines with one brush stroke this could be a really good warm-up for you to work on kind of hand brush control all right so that one I made a little bit thinner obviously every time that I paint these all look so different so it's kind of fun to see what what they all look like. All right, now I'm gonna work on my green. Same thing, grab a lot of liquid from my brush. I'm, I'm always starting on the same side. I think it's because since I'm right-handed, I like to paint and, and push to the, to the right. If you are left-handed and paint with your left hand, my guess is that it might be the opposite where you might like to start on the right and pull to the left. It has to do with how we're used to writing letters when we go to school, or we always start on the left and we go to the right. All right, same thing. I'm going to figure out how thick I want this rainbow arch here. And once I figured out how thick it is, then I'm going to paint upwards. Now this whole time I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at the actual color here and I'm also trying to look at the white that I'm leaving in between to see if I can have that white be more or less uniform as I go, as I create my rainbow. Up and around. Right. 
Remember that it's really easy to fix these edges that might not turn out if you have enough water on the paper. All right, oops, looks like <laughs> the two sides of my rainbow are a little uneven. All right, and then the very last step is I'm going to add a little heart in the middle. If you have been with me for any of the other Mantra Monday paintings, you've noticed that I always try to hide a little heart somewhere in my design. To me, it kind of is a way to remind me every time I look at this that the people and the places that are in my heart is really what matters. So I always add a little heart. And I'm sure my mom and my sister who are watching right now are like, my sister's probably like, eh. <laughs> ooey gooey. Can't believe she said that. It's so funny. All right. Now, when I do make my heart, I tend to add actually quite a bit of liquid here. Do you notice that I have, it's almost pooling here. When it dries... If you have enough liquid here, when it dries, then you get this really nice, sharp ring around the heart. That's what happens when you have quite a bit of liquid on the outside. You can also notice that because I had a lot of liquid in my rainbow, I do have these exterior lines that are a little bit more pronounced. I like that in a painting. If you do not like that, then all you would do is just take a little bit of that liquid out. And then as we let this dry, we're going to grab our black pen. This Micron pen is a size 03. The reason why I like to use these Micron pens is because they are permanent and waterproof. So if I end up using the pen first on a watercolor painting, it will not run if I um, paint over the black part. All right, let me just move this a little bit. And now we're going to trace our mantra. I am enough. All right, the very last steps that we won't really have time for during this um, Instagram Live is when you let it dry completely and it's no longer wet to the touch, then you can take your kneaded eraser and you can erase some of the lines that we used to um, for, for our mantra. And since we didn't have any pencil lines in our actual drawing, you won't have to erase. But if you did draw out your rainbow before you painted, you can also erase it there. So um, this was this week's mantra. I hope you can find a nice place in your office or in your room in order to share this proudly. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please follow me on social media, check out my website, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.